It was good, everybody. So welcome to another watch list for the week of Sunday, April 28th. Now, this watch list is going to be interesting for me personally because we're all going to be looking at the charts pretty much at the same time right now because I literally just, just got home from doing a long drive about six hours in a row just now. I got in and then I got on this laptop and I'm starting to run the watch list here with y'all. So it's 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 us that's why i told everyone to bring requests so make sure you bring tickets because we'll look at tickets together and as well as you know i always talk out the thought process because the focus here at btsmc my focus is always on educating and making sure that everybody could be self-sufficient it's not about feeding anybody so i want y'all to understand how we get to the point of yo this stock should do this this stock should do this so if you know the hows then eventually down the line you won't need anybody anybody not me not any mentor you're involved with not any youtube not none of that but then at this point you start to hit a point where you're like hey everybody's confluence so if you do like somebody's analysis and like say you you like the way i trade in my analysis i become a level of confluence like yeah i know me and rel both think that nq is going down this week and that that's where i want to get everybody versus i don't know what's going on and rel tell me what's going to happen it's okay to start there we all start there i'm just saying what's the goal the goal is self-sufficiency real talk that's my focus that's my purpose behind doing all this otherwise i'll just stay quiet because when people just want me to do let's say like just straight call outs and stuff and not teaching them how to actually get the call themselves and stuff like that i'm like bro i got i got some fire discourse for you for that this ain't that <laughs> you know it's just not that's my purpose for doing this i just trade on my own you feel what i'm saying so i'm an educator at the heart and if you're dealing with me you know one thing you're gonna do is by the end of dealing with me you're gonna learn how to become self-sufficient that's what everybody under me has done and we're going to continue to do that that's the trend that's tradition so with that being said yeah i'm gonna try to have as much energy as possible i'm just a little tired but i'm happy to be here even if it don't show all the way on my face i'm happy to be here i'm just a little tired from driving all day so um let's get into it right so let's start with this economic report see what we got this week i did look at this on friday before i left so i know monday doesn't have anything but skipping to the bottom you may see that it is employment week it's non-farm payroll week so the first friday of every month is going to be non-farm payroll week so this is where you get get employment data and those typically cause some really major swings in the market and so on employment week we like to get involved on mondays because typically on monday you'll see some nice moves when it's non-farm payroll week any other week in the month, meaning week two, three, and four, Mondays are usually lower probability. They're not really the best movement. But usually Mondays of non-farm payroll week tend to have some really nice movement. So I know there's nothing scheduled here. So there's no economic event necessarily. But it's the fact that it's the Monday of non-farm payroll week, while I do expect potentially a decent move tomorrow. So we'll see what's up and not, everything's about probability. I'm just saying that happens a lot. Nothing is guaranteed, of course. So I'm hoping for nice price action on Monday, which will be tomorrow. Now for Tuesday, you see uh, nothing too crazy. Nothing that I'm like overly excited about. The real draw this week right now is FOMC. We got FOMC on the same week as non-farm payroll. So you know we're going to have a, a, a week where some crazy things may happen in the market and you need to be careful. You absolutely need to be careful. So prior to me hit record, I was talking to the people on the Zoom just now about having emotional management um, while you're trading, even past just a risk management strategy. If your emotions are out of whack, you're not going to follow your risk management strategy. So emotional management. So on weeks like this week where we have FOMC and non-farm payroll in the same week, your emotions need to stay in check because the the movements in the market may become very violent in either direction and it might be back and forth so i want everybody to be careful but just understand the second half of the week being like wednesday through friday is kind of where that's that's where it could get real real nice real nice price movement could come in those days as well as like i said potentially even monday so just overall we may get some nice movements in the in the market so with that means so let's go over to the dollar now we like to start with the dollar because a lot of times when the dollar is going up, that shows you that the market may be trading to the downside. They tend to move fairly inversely. It's not super like exacting, but it's a really good indicator. So the dollar has been trading higher and then we hit a point of consolidation right by our first target. So our first target was taking it in it. And as you see here, like we 
from watch list weeks ago we talked about the dollar making a higher move from back here and it's been doing exactly that and we're at this point right here where we're consolidating right next to our next target so our next target on the dollar is getting into 106.667 that's the first first target so we we fell just short but well that's the next target rather but we fell just short and we're trying to get our way up there i said last week in the watch that we could use this daily busy to take us higher and we've been holding it so far we've been holding it for sure as we talk about bodies holding it it's not about wicks it's about bodies holding this area but i want us to also know that simultaneously this is a weekly bullish fair value gap so i could almost even delete the daily thing and just view this as simply we have a weekly fair value gap here and you see we have come to about the 50 percent of it so far and we got a, a little bounce out of it so what i can kind of expect this week may be trading a little bit down first before i move up into this area so i i think overall we may consolidate a little bit more and i can see fomc being the day where we actually make that move higher um and if not then and, and price starts to trade lower then we'll see some other things that can rescue it like if i see something on a daily that can rescue it, like i may say if i would like to see what price does inside of this fair value gap and this order block right here these these two red candles i like to see what price do, does in these couple areas before i get necessarily bearish although i will say i would have low expectations for this area if because it has to do with price being next to a target so if, if price is already right by the target there's no reason to retrace this deeply before delivering it so if we do come back down this low i actually may start to feel that we're going to end up running these lows and making a move to the downside so if anything i do kind of want us to hold this upper portion here early in the week so that we could deliver higher so those are things i'm watching for on dxy and um and uh once again just just so you guys know i i am once again kind of viewing this at the same time so this this watch list is like a special circumstance usually i get to check all my charts out before we get on here tell you what i think so we're looking at this live together because i just got home but i didn't want to cancel class so let's look at this together right now so that's dxy now let's go ahead and check out um let's go to es let's go to es right quick um so we had this heavy move down uh i think the team made a lot of money on the on the way down as we we really predicted everything and so now we said last week we were expecting a retracement so this is my first time kind of talking to y'all since since last week's watch list and remember last week's watch list why did we see the move coming up i hope you guys know why i'm gonna remind you i know we have some new people in here and some people might have forgotten but once again these watches is to learn not just to get you know the like direction from me like nah, nah, nah it's to learn so how was how do we even suspect that that could happen looking at nasdaq right here and something you could check for going forward notice that nasdaq ran out the lows from the Asia session. So during the New York session of NASDAQ, it ran out the lows of the Asia session. Okay, cool. But then when we looked at ES in that same time period on that Friday, notice that ES didn't run out their lows from Asia. See, we stopped just short. We made what? A higher low. NASDAQ made a lower low. ES, which is the SP 500, made a higher low. And so we saw that as a divergence. And then what we did at that time was we said, yo, we need somebody to, to tie break this, right? Like, who do we believe? Who's telling the truth? ES or NASDAQ, who's telling the truth? So what we did was we came down, we said, yo, let's look at DXY. And on that same that same day, uh, where is that? Friday, wherever, wherever it is, man. What I'm saying is what we noticed was that DXY failed to make a higher high. So DXY actually made a lower high. So if DXY is making a lower high, that means that DXY is bearish or it's looking bearish, it's showing bearish signs for the day. And therefore it looks like NASDAQ is the one lying because NASDAQ is the one that's looking bearish. Meanwhile, we're getting a bullish signal from DXY. We're getting a bullish signal from ES. And I say, you know what, let's take it a step further. Let's take it a step further. Let's take it a step further, hold on. We then looked at YM and we saw the Dow Jones and we seen that on that Friday, we were all, look, all the way up here. We're not even close to these lows from Asia. Like literally on Friday, 
the Dow Jones, which is YM, the Dow Jones was just bullish that whole day for real. So they didn't even try to fake us to the downside. So Dow Jones showed a bullish sign and so did the Russell that day. Um, wherever it's at, just know the Russell also um, what was bullish that day. I think it's around here what I'm looking at. So they didn't run that Thursday low either. So that's why we said, all right, the only ticker that actually made a lower low was the NASDAQ. And so that right there was a divergence that said, hey, you know what? What we should do is expect higher prices early on in the week for this upcoming week. So we, I know we had such a look at the dump that the market had, right? We were dropping so hard. But then based, based on those divergences, we said, hey, you know what? I think it's time for a retracement. And look what we got, a very nice retracement. Um, and Jude said, that's a gem right there. I appreciate it. I hope it really helps out. It's something to look at. Because one thing um, I used to get caught up doing was like looking at one ticker and just basing everything on that one ticker. Like, oh, I love SPY, so I'm looking at SPY. It's like, no, no, no. We know SPY and QQQ, or in other words, ES and NQ, they typically move in tandem. So when they, when one person's, oh, not on the when one ticker is doing like the opposite of the other, that's something to look into. You need to, you need to do an investigation because it's giving you a sign right there. Um, and it's funny because that actually helped us out on Thursday, this Thursday's trading, the one that just passed. So I'm actually kind of going off topic a little bit, but once again, we like, we like to, we like to, to teach it here, right? We like to teach. That's what we're here for. We people that want to actually become profitable traders, not just get fed our whole lives. That's, that's BTSMC. If that's not you, you in the wrong place. You in the wrong place. So if it's the, uh, this is the NASDAQ, right? You see these red lows. You see these red lows here on NASDAQ. Let me go ahead and mark off this. So it's funny, NASDAQ this day refused to run these red lows. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Cause hold on. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and throw these things side by side for real. Let's throw these things side by side for real and say, let's look at ES and what ES did. Look at those red lows, man. These are the same ones, by the way, in case you didn't know. Look at these red lows, boom. So ES ran these lows and NASDAQ did not run those same lows. You see these two red candles, those two red candles? Yeah, yeah. So ES made a lower low, NASDAQ didn't. Boom, divergence. I'm like, okay, hold on, hold on. Cause A, heading into that, let me go back to, to NASDAQ. Let me go back to NASDAQ solely. Yo, people heading into that, it looked bearish, right? right? Price tried to make a move up. And then we we made a bearish move. We closed under this favorite value. We closed under this favorite value. Things was looking good. Like, I'm like, okay, we should definitely be running these lows. So when NASDAQ falls short, my, meanwhile, simultaneously, ES actually delivered, right? ES delivered, hit the first target, which is, you see where it says uh, 4H quarter. That's, that's a concept that I, I teach in the mentorship, whatever. It literally, I ain't gonna lie, like literally delivered it to the tick, to the exact tick. So it's just like, come on now. But we talk about that one in the mentorship, but like that was that was the first target right there. I was looking for that same target on NASDAQ and it never got there. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Why NASDAQ moving up like that? And so, and we, we were live trading at the time when this was happening, like me and the mentees. And uh, I go over to DXY and I say, hey, we need a tiebreaker, DXY, who's lying? DXY showed bullish signals to us. We're like, ah, oh, man. I guess NASDAQ, my fault, my fault. I guess ES is the one lying this time because ES made a lower low, NASDAQ made a higher low, and DXY made a lower high. So I'm like, ah, oh, man, there you go. Guess we gonna be bullish today. And I eventually had to change biases because at first we ended up playing um, a little bit more downside as we were trying to decide and stuff like that. And it wasn't the, the cleanest, but it ended up being a green day overall once we were able to switch biases, which is a whole other concept in itself. Being able to switch biases on the fly, because definitely heading into the lot trade, definitely even during the lot trade at first, we were bearish, expecting bearish prices. And then we had this this doji candle, like, you know, it's a lot of stuff that was going on in this time period here. But then obviously, you know, price then made its way to the upside. And yeah, a lot of money was made on the upside. So it is what it is. Um, but that's, I don't want to go too far off topic. It's, it's a lot, but yeah, like Vincent said, that's where he got caught up. Should have switched biases. and and got committed to the trade. Yeah, and that's what I mean with emotional management because there were all the signs in the world look bearish that this day, right? It looked really good on the bearish side and they came so close to their target, like so close to the target. You really would have thought they would have came to the yellow line and then 
it, it just didn't deliver. So you got to start looking and, and, and don't ignore the signs. There were signs all down here inside of this wick that were telling us like, yo, we about to have a reversal. And I'm watching them and I'm calling those signs out and it's something like, yo, I don't like that it just did that. I'm like, hey, I don't know, y'all. Like, I don't like that that's happening, blah, blah, blah. And they eventually, you know, we found a way to switch in biases um, during, you know, these parts of the market down in here. And then we, we make money on our side. So that's what it that's what it's about. But we had a whole detailed class about how to switch biases later that day. Like we got back on at eight o'clock that night, talked about how to switch biases quickly and, and efficiently and make so it's like there's a way to be wrong in the market. You can still be right when you're wrong. And that's a concept I, I want to drive home today too. Even when you're wrong, you can still be right because there's a correct way to be wrong. That makes sense. You know what I mean? So, but uh, that's 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 a lot. So my fault. Let's talk about what we think is gonna happen this week. But those are some gems we could take out of last week. So after this uh, fake move to the downside, really we started rocking into the upside, started making some strong moves. And I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily bullish looking at this, but one thing I don't like is when price is giving mixed signals that tells me there's typically potentially a, a period of consolidation coming. Because <clears throat> if we were bullish, right? Let me use the rewind button right quick. So we expected this move up. We actually expected, as I was telling my phase two members, we actually expected a reversal here. So we talked about the reversal in class that day. And so then a reversal comes and we expected lower prices. Then, as y'all seen, price pushed right back up on uh, on Friday. So it's like, all right, hold on, hold on, hold on. This is weird because typically if we really were bullish, y'all, if we really were bullish, first of all, we had a line of defense here that failed. We had another line of defense. This this fair value gap is really extremely high probability. I thought we would bounce here for sure. I said, and I said, it's like if we don't bounce here, then I definitely have price coming to run these lows. So when you see that happen, price trades doing, I'm like, oh, it's lit. I didn't have expectations on this to hold price at all. I I felt that price would trade through this. This is a fair value gap that I would ignore personally. I would have ignored this for, for alternate reasons. So I didn't care about that one at all. This was the one that would tell us if we bullish or not. So once all this happened, I'm like, oh yeah, we, we bearish, bro. We finna run these lows. Everything looking good. I actually made money here on the downside. But then at the end of the day, uh, price came back up. So now we go bullish. So this is how you expect chop. This is how you avoid chop. And I'm not saying we're ultimately going to chop. I'm just saying I'm kind of like taking it easy and watching like, yo, we might enter a period of a little bit of consolidation in this area because if we were bullish, we would have delivered right here where I said that would have happened. You feel me? And if we were bearish, guess what would have happened? What I thought would happen. We would have actually ran through them lows. So a valid bullish setup didn't work. A valid bearish setup didn't hold and so now price is coming up and then even even this it, it rockets past it for a second and then we start kind of like we move into right here this is where we are right now i believe it's not really like i like that it used this bullish for value up that's good but it's not like taking off and even right now we i guess we left the baby gap in right here but nothing too crazy it's just not like really giving that energy I would I would want to see even with PCE news that came out on Friday it didn't really give it no energy Friday was a pretty choppy day so um I just don't really have high expectations until kind of FOMC I think FOMC will help us move and figure out the next big move in the market because as I look at the Nasdaq right now uh we you know we made a powerful move down we got a nice retracement I do think price will come to this blue area next I think this is the next place it's going in the short term what it does here will tell us a lot. I, I I lean towards it going past it and running out all time highs. I lean towards it, but I'm not gonna stamp that as my official analysis right now because, to be honest, we're at a really in between spot to where I would want to see how price acts when or if it gets here for real. If it doesn't get here, it's answering our question in the first place, right? If it doesn't get here we'll start to see price trade on down and, and it can make new lows. Obviously, if we run these lows, though, you see other places I expect price to run. If we run these lows right here, I expect price to run 16,900.50 on MNQ. Like if we take the lows from, from Friday, April 19th, 
we should definitely be taking the lows uh, 16900 and um i would expect a pretty powerful leg down as well yeah if we were to do that but uh obviously if we just keep pushing we just keep pushing what makes this push suspect to me as i've told y'all in the past something to look for is not just fair value guys but it's also the lack of fair value gap so on the move up right now it's a choppy move up it's nasty so for me to think this is the bottom right here that's something that makes me hesitate on saying yo i think this is the bottom of price action it's like there's not really any fair value that's being created to the upside it's seen it's like lacking energy i don't like when we stagger into things especially if this is in a, if this is a reversal you know how evil market makers are right they don't want you to be a part of their move so they're not really the type to like tap into a, a POI and then kind of stagger out of that thing. When it do that, or when it does that, it's probably coming back down. Now, is that this? I'm not stamping that as this, right? I'm not gonna go ahead and say that, but I want you to keep your eyes open for it. Just be careful with falling in love with bullishness because we got a retracement here. This is a healthy retracement and it's expected. What are we really reacting to? I raised it off my chart because I don't like it. My chart is noisy, but I just want us to remember that the NASDAQ, which will drive the rest of the market, is reacting to this order block that we targeted. So you guys may remember I had a, a target up here, which I had this target on my chart for many, many weeks. And I have screenshot evidence that everything I posted that all on my Instagram. We targeted the high. We knew that the high would be right here. So like we knew price would come here and then we got the rejection. We talked about price going lower, running out these targets. So what were those targets? I'm talking about this this whole section this whole consolidation section right here we knew price would run that out so when price runs that out in one straight move in one week we took back three months of price action in one week in one week people what is that what is that telling you price just met an objective when price has an objective it moves quickly and it doesn't let you in it moves quickly and doesn't let you in and it got straight to its objective which is to come into this blue area which is that that weekly order block once price got there look what happened we got the reaction cool cool does this mean that this is the bottom does this mean we make a new all-time highs next i told you my reasons last week on why i'm very suspect on this being the bottom and a lot of it has to do with me feeling that the sp 500 is more downside and dxy has more upside on higher time frames so with those things, as, as well as some other major name tickers that to me can make more of a move down before the official all-time high again, those reasons kind of keep me a little weary on getting overly hyped for these past, you know, last week's little retracement. And so I'm kind of staying put. And I like to, but retracements or, excuse me, reversals are more believable to me when there's fair value gaps involved. Now you may say, oh, but well, I see a fair value gap right here. And look, bodies held it too. See, you're right. You're 100 percent right. You could you could say bodies held this one and it bounced. Like I see that. I seen that. I was just like it's insignificant to me, and I just don't put too much value to that, especially because look at ES. ES don't have none. There are no daily fit by gaps here. So being that Nasdaq tapped into a weekly order block, I would expect daily fair value gaps to be the reaction. It doesn't have to be the first set of candles, but definitely shortly after. So to see, like, we've had a good amount of chance to, like, make a daily fair value gap here on NASDAQ, and we haven't. So that leaves me very suspect on the upside. Just because I'm suspect on upside doesn't mean that I'm bearish, okay? So there are some weeks, like this week, where we said, yo, I expect NASDAQ to make a down move, and when it makes a down move, I don't expect it to return to this area before it touches the order block what did price do leave the area never came back to it touch the order block there's weeks where we come out and, and say things like those because it's very clear in price action then there's weeks like this where we're at we're at the heart of the middle of a price leg right we're in the middle of this price leg retracement and we did touch a weekly bullish POI so we need to keep that in mind like yo this is a bullish order block off the weekly bro like it could send us to all-time highs the reaction is suspect as well as when you use other tickets for confluence it does seem like those other tickets have some more downside so there's just certain i need you to keep the bullish sentiment in mind as well as the bear sentiment in mind 
and trade carefully like me i'm not swing trading anything inside of this area once i get clarity then i'll swing trade what did i swing trade i played this down move on a swing i definitely have my qqq puts for this down move because this was a clear move to me and it had a, a a good entry and a good exit so but this when we in between why why force the swing why force the swing wait for clarity because once we get clarity on upside then when we come over these all-time highs, I expect to like rock it over it. Like I don't expect it to just kind of like stagger over. Like not nah, when we push past some all-time highs, it should be a nice move past, and we're gonna extend. And then I'll have a new target for where it should be getting to. But until we get that bullish confirmation, nah, be careful. Uh, so you know we 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 got we're holding this for our bullish for value up right here. I want to see. Uh, what we do with that will we continue to hold that will we accelerate once again i do think our next destination is at least coming to this this daily sippy here so i'm like super super short-term bullish or i think yeah yeah super short-term bullish but like intermediate term we'll see we'll see so that's that's nasdaq i mean es is like generally the same sentiment these are all targets we, we talked about last week on the retracement though like price as price coming into this this daily sippy you see that's where it, it got to and then consolidated these are all things we talked about it's just that like i said this time period here was tricky because we we came into it came down hard ran those lows you would expect some more continuation but we did have a safe target here on es that that was literally the bottom um but unfortunately i wasn't able to like it's not like i was in shorts and i i took i was actually on nasdaq this day as i described i was playing nasdaq not es and nasdaq i was waiting for it to hit that target nasdaq's equivalent of that target remember but it's cool it's cool they did what they wanted to do so they came back up and um now we waiting to see what's next so this is one of the weeks so i say just just definitely be careful um and and also i wanted to show you guys this i want to show you guys this um just remember why and we targeted coming into this 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 monthly bullish fair value gap right here so remember we a major concept I've been trying to drive home for everybody is to use higher time frame targets because price will respect the higher time frames and all the lower time frames are just employees of the higher time frame because the higher time frame is the boss. So if the monthly told that you could tell the monthly candle was showing us that it's coming into this monthly fair value gap. So heading into it, no rally. I didn't believe in any rally, not this green candle, not this green candle. Not this this wick that was once a green candle, nothing. I didn't believe anything until we came to this area, which is the opening, you know, this overall area is the monthly bullish fair value. So once we came in here, look, we got a reaction. Now we popped out, pop out season, everything looking good. So that's was we got a reaction. I didn't play upside, nah. Only only downside into this area is what we were focused on. This is where we wait to see, hey. If that's really the bottom, I want to see certain things happen. So something I don't like is how low we came down on this red candle. I wouldn't have wanted to see something like that. Does that mean I'm bear? No, it doesn't mean I'm bearish. I'm just saying I, I don't like this. That's not typically how we would have started this bullish move. So even when it comes to the Dow Jones now, which is YM, I know not everybody trades futures, but y, YM is the Dow Jones. Even when it comes to the Dow Jones, this down move is a little suspect to me that we made here because of how low it went. So it just it just makes me, like I said, stay cautious. Like, oh, let me not get overly bullish, you know. Um, and also, uh, same thing here on the on the Russell, on the Russell. Look how we we pushing out and then we consolidating. This is not it's not how I like to start a reversal. It's not what a reversal look like when it like it's not how a reversal typically starts. So we'll see we all our downside targets have hit they've done exactly what it's supposed to do last week was a period of retracement counter trend trading and now it's like we're right in the middle of that retracement and so we and we have what fomc week not from payroll it's kind of a time period to say hey, let me take it easy and then act on what the candles really show me and so so that's that now oh let me uh, speak on cl right quick same thing with cl man same thing with cl we wanted higher prices on CL via higher time frames. We came really close and then we consolidated and then price came down. And I said, yo, if we don't use this weekly, there was a weekly bullish trade value gap in here. See this one right here. If we don't use this, then we will be coming into here and I'm expecting us to pop out of here. 
and then make a move to the other side. We're getting our reactions. Things are looking okay, but we're not, right? We're not like getting that energy. We're not getting that displacement. We're not really pushing out of this area how we would want to see. So when it comes to CL, I'm also in a period of like, hey, it's suspect on upside. It's suspect on upside, but we need those high impact news drivers to give it the energy it needs to go wherever it's trying to go. Um, so I say if we lose these lows, then I would expect to move back under these lows. So if we lose these lows from last week, expect to move back under the lows from, you know, the March 20th week. Um, but I think if we come back above this week, then I'm expecting continuation into this uh, monthly RB here around around $89, you know, around $89. Area. So that's that's CL is kind of a period of we at the middle. I would say see what it see if we could accelerate over the, the the highs of this wick this friday april 19th wick also see if we're able to lose the lows of monday april 22nd the in-between zone is where your, your account can get chopped up you feel me and i don't want that for y'all so this in-between zone right here you got to be careful there's areas where you really got to be careful at. so I, I just want y'all you know play cautious while we wait on more play cautious for now um, and from here, I want to uh, take requests because once again, this is just a watch list that uh, unfortunately is is uh, I just got here. I just got here, so I need I need uh, requests. But once again, I am super ultra short term bullish on Nasdaq and ES. Super ultra short term bullish, but I'm open to anything based on where we sit in the market, and I gave all the reasons why. So this is one of them. This is one of them type of weeks so far. Um, so. Let's say Mara, Riot, Google. All right, so pick one though, because uh, pick one between Mara and Riot real quick, if you don't mind. And then I got the other one. So Riot, I right, bet we'll do Riot. So let's go with Riot here. All right, so yeah, I definitely played downside in here. Very nice. Good money was made on Riot. Definitely played downside into the target. My target was this 861. Once we got there, I was Gucci. All right, we made a little bit lower, filled out the weekly VI, and now we pushed up. So this is another example of when price meets an objective, it's time to go the other way. What was the objective? Filling out this weekly VI. That's why I was, that's why I was there before price ever got there. Filled it out. Now we move the other way. This is what I mean by, I like how we, this is how a reversal should look. This is how I expect a reversal to look at the beginning. This is beautiful. So, for me, I wouldn't want price really kind of coming under this this fair value gap right here um, from Monday, April 22nd. I kind of wanted to hold this area if we're going to make a move higher. Let me check the weekly out, though. So this gap here on the weekly, I don't want price coming back down in there to fill that out. I want this gap to stay open if we're going to move higher. Um, so that's for one. Yeah, oh, look, and that coincides right with what we were talking about. So exactly. Here on the daily, I want us to hold this 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 candle here from monday april 22nd to move make move higher now obviously we don't i don't even want it going back down there in the first place i'm just saying if we do go back down there if i can still hold this area specifically the upper half of it i don't want to even come to the lower half if we could and um hold the upper half of this kind of like it did with this candle it already tapped into it low key but it's not really like rocketing out so you know we need that energy but Mm, yeah, I I mean, let me see. Let me go to the monthly. I like to start with the monthly anyway. Uh, monthly is nasty, man. Riot's monthly is dirty. Riot's monthly is dirty, man. It's not really. This is a real bad consolidation area. Only thing you can say is it ran out the lows of this consolidation, tapped into a bullish fair value gap right here. I draw it right quick so y'all can see what I'm talking about. Tapped into that. Look how it filtered out pretty much to the tick, too. This blue area I'm drawing, right? I kind of filled out pretty much the tick. That's exactly what we like that. We like when we can sweep liquidity, tap into a fair value gap and make a move out. That's good. And it makes it seem like it wants to make a move up higher again to take out these highs next. But um, now you go to the lower time frame and see if it's kind of giving you that sign. I don't do chart patterns, but this looks very similar to like a, what y'all call that again, a morning star. So people who trade that, it's like a weekly morning star right here. Um, can't believe I just said that. I just got nauseous. I ain't gonna lie. Anyway, I, I hate that stuff. But I'm trying to cater to different people in here. So 
yeah, you know, that's also something that looks nice for potential upside. Um, I'm trying to look at this green can. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this green can rejecting price necessarily. So I would want to see uh, some continuation here on Riot to the upside. I do. I do. I do think it. Because because for me, if it was bearish, right? If it was bearish, it wouldn't be here right now. If it was bearish, it really would have just obviously just went lower immediately based on it coming out of its consolidation. But it's only saving grace would have been this weekly bearish rag up right here. Once this didn't get used, to me, Riot is going to make a move higher. Like coming for these highs type vibe. Um, but a super short-term target would be taking it into this. Let me see where that's at. So I'm looking at, my bad, I tried to press the thing. I'm looking at this weekly bullish for value gap. I'm a bearish rather. Weekly bearish for value gap. Does that mean I think we're going to go bearish with it? No. I'm just saying that I'm pointing it out. I'm just pointing out that it is technically a bearish for value gap. But I think it'll get traded through. But I just think in the short term, that's our first destination, just getting up in the air. And then uh, we want to see even more continuation to the outside. So right now, I'm, I'm bullish on. Right, I'm bullish on. We know the areas we want to see hold. And uh, yeah, that's that. So let's go with Google next. I got a couple of requests for Google, so I got gotcha. you. So Google did all the things that we wanted it to do, man. All the things we wanted it to do. This is a target. Had a my chart for mad long. But we got them over even even better right even better we love to over deliver on the targets so we did that and then we you know really consolidated on friday that was off the earnings that they had so and i remember my my mentees was talking about charting this one i forgot mentees where we got this purple from but price obviously did help hold it and go higher and then here earnings earnings took us to the upside so what's next for google man obviously we're at all-time highs right now we're obviously at all-time highs right now i don't want to fill in this gap. if we're going to be bullish y'all we should not be filling in this gap don't expect this gap to get filled in like we could trade into it a little bit but definitely not filling it in so i'll probably do something like i would measure the gap and say it's kind of funny where i have this 167 level it's kind of where i would want to be respected if we're gonna be bullish i don't really want price coming under this gap that 167 area i want google to kind of hold that if we want to make a move higher all right if we start coming under 167 i'm gonna get real suspect on google all right so as long as google is kind of holding anywhere above here whatever i'm expecting just even more continuation to the upside we come under that 167 I would expect it to start to like make its way into filling in the rest of this gap. All right. So we watching Google. Um, they they look bullish to me. I think like on some obvious stuff just because they gapped up, but because that these are all time highs. So at this point, we're gonna have to trade what we see. And how do you trade all time highs? You ride an uptrend until you can't ride it anymore, but you just need to pay attention to all the POIs that you see. So what I mean is, if we are trading at all time highs. And let's say right now, price makes a down move, makes an up move, boom. And and we're going to call this a, a, a OB right here, right? We're going to say, hey, there's an order block, a bullish order block right there. All you can do at all-time highs is wait for entries that you like. So first, it trades past, let's say, a bullish fair value gap. That's the first sign of like, hey, potentially a reversal might be happening. We're not spooling anymore, right? We're not aggressively moving in one direction. We just disrespected this fair value gap. All right, what's the next line of defense we got? Well... There's an order block under here. So this is major, this is major for us. Because if we trade through this, price is telling you something. So when price trades through this, especially a specific part of it, if you talk about order blocks, master class, you know what I'm talking about. If price trades through that, that spot that we talk about, then you know, and, and keep that keep that low. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> if price trades trades through our spot, then we look for down prices. Now what do you do? Switch biases like we talked about earlier in the zoom, and we start finding what is price targeting what is it looking to do at that point you may say hey we got two bullish tools or two bullish pd arrays that failed us it may be time to look for our downside targets and you target those instead and so you know under this bullish ob you might see let's say another quote unquote bullish ob out of context down here and you're like i'm taking this and it's like nah, nah. order flow has showed us that we're bearish right order flow has showed us that we're bearish so why are you taking this out of context bullish OB that has nothing to do with nothing. 
We not worry about that. We not tripping on that. We gonna make a move lower to where the bearish target is. It's gonna be filling out this gap. So you, when it comes to these all time highs, you you pretty much just waiting for your moment inside of POIs. Don't take it just because it's in there. I never, unless the area is literally like this small. And even so, when I enter, I enter in a 15 seconds. So to be honest, no matter what it is, low key, I'm always gonna wait for confirmation on my play before I get in. I'm not gonna front. And confirmation for me is not, not, hear me so clearly, confirmation for me is not waiting to see a change of character or break of structure. I don't need to see that. And I don't care about that. And I don't trade that. I don't trade break of structure and change of character. There's other ways to understand market sentiment without that. Um, but do I teach it to people? Absolutely, because it was a great foundation for me. So I'm just saying, for me, when I'm looking for confirmation, it's not about, oh, I need to see, you know, price close under this low, and then I can say we're bearish. Like, nah, I, I would already know we bearish based on what happens up in here. So I'm just saying, for me, when I when we touch a POI, like if we touch this blue area and that's a, a bearish POI, I'm going to look at the 15 second and get my confirmation that I look for to tell me I it's safe to enter this trade now. You feel me? And then... By the time it does come under this yellow line, people are just now realizing that price is bearish. And then they're looking to take, you know, either the breakout or maybe a retracement or something. And they waiting on certain things. But like, I'm already severely in profit by the time that even happens. And my stop loss is protected because typically where I get in that price never comes back there. Prices retracements will be somewhere on the low side over here. So people is panicking in this area because price might play with them a little bit. But I'm like, highly protected i got in up here somewhere so i'm really just chilling but uh once again it's a side note so all i'm saying is people when you're at all-time highs you're constantly testing out pois to see if they hold or not and just let price talk to you let price whisper sweet nothings all right don't don't be eager could be at all-time highs if anything all-time highs you actually need to execute more patience than if we're not that's the twist to all-time highs so yeah that's google it that is google it uh let's go with snow next so snowman snowman yeah that's me so on this monthly right here when we talk about snow on a different watch list we were talking we seen uh the rejection in here we were looking for price to continue to the downside i'm still looking for snow to potentially continue to the downside if we come back under this low, because what do we say about price touching the lowest body? Look how price came to the lowest body and that's all it wanted. That's all it wanted was the lowest body, you see? The lowest body of these swing points be targets for us. So that yellow area are the targets for us. So one thing I look to see is, once we get to the lowest body, are we gonna accelerate past it or are we actually bouncing? And when we do bounce, what does the bounce look like? So something I don't like, for example, is we got to the lowest body and price looks like this. That's not a good sign for bears. It's not a good sign for bears because we got to an objective and then we turn around and it's not because it's a bullish engulfing, but if you want to think of it like that, you can say that. We have a bullish engulfing candle right when we got to an objective. So I'm talking to those type of traders in here. Now, like talking to like more of a smart money perspective, I would say we have a, a buildable liquidity into an objective. That's a bad sign. So I can see price making a move higher to take out that liquidity before doing anything else next. Because I don't, like, we shouldn't be staggering into it like that. That's never a good sign. Y'all know when market makers are looking to take liquidity, they do it really aggressively. They're not nice. They are not nice people. When they take a stop loss, they destroy it. So if you have, if, they, if there's an objective here to be met on the downside, they would plummet through that thing. They're not going to, tap it and then make a huge green candle right after that tells me that now the eyes are looking to the upside and is looking for a new buy side objective potentially so when i had this arrow here i was hoping we see some continuation because if we did not just hit the lowest body but instead take these wicks oh yeah snowflake definitely look like it wanted some some downside and it may still deliver i'm just saying that that's the only how i would get bearish on snow again as if we're able to lose these lows that we put in over here. Um, so 
something that should help us in the short term on determining whether we will even go for those lows in the first place is i would say right now if snowflake is bullish if snowflake is bullish it should hold this area right here it shouldn't come back under this blue area so if snowflake is bullish i'll just try to round down for real no, that's too low so let's say around like 150 150 ish if snowflake loses 150 150 to me it's gonna it's gonna make its move back down now if it holds this area how it's doing and and it makes it move higher then yeah we start looking for upside targets and a, a very quick upside target may be kind of doing the same thing let's say highest body right here ultra ultra short term target would be you know 161 but that seems really close let me see something that's a little too close for me now now i want to get some a little more i would say taking it uh, into this wick at 168 for because to be honest if this is the bottom if it met an objective it will end up coming back into this weekly fair value gap right here anyways so you see this weekly fair value gap that'll be my next bullish target on snowflake but if we're able to take these lows again yeah snowflake should be making this move to 127 so a lot a lot depends on this area are we gonna hold this area or not because it'll tell us whether we're gonna make that upside move or if we're gonna end up making that downside move so i'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the snow does in that area especially if we like for real for real if we could close under this green wick on a four hour from thursday april 25th at 9 30 there's a green wick if we close under that i really don't see snow coming back up if it does that if it closes under this bro i ain't gonna lie snow should definitely be running these lows out you know what i mean so high watch high watch um i'll do a couple more let's go so far uh it was next Cause, yeah i did talk about riot yep clutch i hope you guys saw the, the riot one so let's go so far let's go with so far so i'm gonna clear this chart start over all right so when it comes to this monthly chart man what a nasty drop a lot of times bearish moves don't look like this they just don't look like that so i wouldn't fall in love with downside here notice that the monthly is holding this bullish fair value gap here all right cool that's probably telling us something but i don't like the drop off in here we always see been in the period consolidation let's see, the, let's see the weekly if it was bearish i don't think we'll be doing what it's doing here so a first bullish target first of all i think it'd be bullish in the ultra short term to come into this bearish here right yeah, but i think we're going to push past that and come into these highs next so i got i got so far coming uh higher into like 906 area just in the ultra short term i think we're going to make a move to the upside here on so far this is the daily chart um we're gonna make that upside move though price should be holding this red candle not even i mean it's, this is overlapping this area so honestly i'm really talking about this vr right here on the daily price should hold this which would be about 7.58 we shouldn't get a daily closure under 758 it's okay if we wick into this area I wouldn't want to see us caught under that if we're going to make a move higher above these highs. So you see these highs right here? If we expect to move above that, we should be holding this area here on a daily to get there. If we close under that area on a daily, I'm going to become very suspect on upside in the short term. You understand? Real suspect. Um, and if we do, if you want to be patient and just wait for us to close under this wick, bro, if we close under the Thursday, April 25th wick, yo, if we close under that wick, so far I'm gonna make a real nice move to the downside, real talk. So we got a downside plan and the upside plan, we got that as well. All right, so, so that's for so far, I hope that was clear. And something that makes us sus on downside once again is the choppiness. That's not what a downside move looks like, especially at the beginning of it. Like this, this ain't it, you know? It's ugly anyways. So I'm not even saying it's the most tradable ticker, but I wouldn't really expect much more downside by the way it look. So how price delivers two targets is a major focus for us as a unit. How price delivers the targets. 
So Amazon was able to take their all time highs and then it pressed down right after, right after. Oh, Amazon really delivered on uh, what we saw happen. Forgive me for this stuff. I was obviously talking about members with this, but um, this is literally what we wanted Amazon to do. We made the move. I talked about price making a move to sweep all of this out and come down past this 168 area. And then we able to deliver perfectly. Cool. Now we push it up. So this is what I like be the beginning of a bullish move to look like. Now that we hit, think about it, right? We came to the target that we talked about that other week. I'm going to delete these targets because it is not even relevant anymore, right? We came, we delivered. So I hope people made money on Amazon. We delivered. Now it's time to push up. What, what do I like about the push? I like how it started. And so for me, when it comes to Amazon, I actually want to see continuation pretty quickly. I, I don't want price coming under this gap. I actually don't even want that gap to get touched for real, to be honest with you. But if price does go, I, if it does go down first, it should hold this gap and then make its way back to the other side. Now, if we if we were to come like under this gap, then I would start getting suspect on Amazon making an upside move. I would actually start to make lower targets. So this gap really should hold price when it comes to Amazon. If we're going to see higher, which I actually expect higher, which even just looking at across, because once again, I'm doing this watch this kind of live with y'all because I was on the road, if you missed that part. So I'm looking at tickets for the first time this weekend right now. As I look at like bigger tickets like Amazon and feeling like it has potentially more upside, take this as a tip. You can use that as confluence for like ES and NASDAQ because just logically, right? I want you to think about in the past, how many times have you seen, let's say Amazon, Nvidia, Apple, all the biggest companies look bullish be making a bullish move but the nasdaq and sp500 are bearish does that does that really make sense right that doesn't happen often it, very here and there and it's usually not collectively that so when i see collectively oh meta apple etc all of those look bullish then i have an expectation that the indices are also going to be bullish because they never really move opposite like that they're going to move together so when i if i'm a little unsure about es and nasdaq because they look kind of like they're giving me mixed signals sometimes the tickers are a lot more clear to me like and when the tickers look clear to me like oh all the tickers are bullish like the, the options tickers then to me i'm like all right well if i was debatable about nasdaq now i'm actually bullish on nasdaq is that my stance now? My bullish on that? Like, no, I didn't even look at all the other tickets. I'm just, I'm just saying, and looking at Amazon, I do lean on the bullish side early in this move. So it's giving me a little bit of a slight bias on the bullish side, which we did say we're short term bullish on the indices anyways, but we're still waiting for a little more information, which will come from seeing Wednesday's price movement and everything, and potentially even tomorrow. Because once again, Mondays of non farm payroll week. Mondays are really energetic a lot of the time as well. So I kind of want to see how price looks tomorrow and anything like that. But I'm leaning with a, with a bullish bias for right now. All right. So, oh, so I, yeah, I did talk about what we want to hold. I talked about, yeah, if we come under that area, I expect to run these lows out and fill in this gap potentially. Uh, and, uh, you know, obviously, if I want this to hold so that we can go to all time highs, by the way. So if, if we could hold this gap, I expect the next destination for Amazon to be those all time highs. All right, so yeah, man, that's that's amazing for you. It's amazing, and um, I guess I guess that's all. Oh, I don't see no more tickets. I didn't do because like I see so far here, but I did so far right before. Uh, SPX is ES, so everything I would have said about ES is what I say about SPX. I mean, I could like quickly look at SPX real quick though. And that'll probably be the last one. Um, that's me teaching people stuff. So right here on SPX, on SPX, let's look at the weekly, right? Like, so even when it comes to a bearish move, what did we say last week? We said we don't want to see this week's candle open up and touch the low of Monday, April 8th. What do we do? <laughs> it touched the low of Monday, April 8th, right? So all the bears in the room just got a bad sign by seeing last week's candle prevent a bearish fair value gap to be created 
So now we got no bearish value gaps. So this whole move is lacking bearish fair value gaps. What did I say? The lack of fair value gaps is a sign. It's just like the abundance of them is a sign. The lack of them is another sign. And so here we are, lacking fair value gaps here to the downside. So that's a bullish signal to me in itself. Let's also remember this. Something I told us to watch out for was the fact that SPY slash SPX is in a monthly bullish fair value gap. And we're getting a nice reaction out of it, right? Okay, we're, getting, we're reacting. Price is showing a respect of it. And this month is about to close. I think Wednesday is, is May 1st. I think Wednesday is May 1st. So this month is about to close. So we're going to end up respecting this most likely. We're going to end up respecting this area. And so then we may just see continuation on to the upside for, for May's monthly candle. So this is getting respected. Uh, man, I am front. Like, I'm definitely, I'm starting, I'm starting to lean in bullish, but I do want to see a, a little more confirmation or lower time frames before I just kind of like outwardly be tell y'all like, yo, I'm bullish. Cause I know that my words can influence some people's trades. So I try to be extremely responsible, not just go off of impulse. I try to give you guys stuff. If I'm gonna say something like with a level of certainty, I want to have confirmations behind it, not just like good signs. When it's just a good sign vibe, I be telling y'all like, yo, this is a good sign because, but we still have to watch out for this, okay? So that you guys can make responsible decisions. I'm not gonna just be like, yo, we definitely going up because blah, 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 nah. I need confirmation before I can say stuff like that. So I hope you guys know I try to be as responsible on here as possible and just give me bull and bear cases. And if there's no bear cases, then guess what? We bullish. And I can speak with just a lot more conviction and stuff like that. Just like how we caught this drop, I was speaking with a bearish conviction. Yeah, because this was pretty clear. This side is, eh, right? It's a little iffy right now. So be careful. Uh, so same vibe I sent on ES, you know, because ES and SPX is, is all over. It's the same thing as the S&P 500. But uh, we did get to this destination. We still holding this area. If we were bearish though, I ain't gonna front. This drop would have taken us past these lows. So returning back to this area is not a good sign for a bear. So I know, yes, we're still holding the fair value up. Yes, I understand that. But this delivery here is not ideal. If we were truly bearish, we would we should have like ran those lows already. So coming back up is is not good. One thing I will expect to see is let me erase these. One thing I would expect to see for further upside right now is price to either leave this open, this area open, and just start to move to the upside, or it could use the upper half of this and trade back to the upside. So price holding like the 50, 66, holding above 50, 66, which is the halfway mark of this area. The price could hold above that. I like a move uh, much higher. Okay, I don't want price filling in this whole thing. So I want price to hold the upper half of this right here, this VR. All right, so, that, so that's that. And I'll do one last one before we get off here. Or at least before I start the recording. And then I, I you know, if I have a question about something, I stay on for a little bit. So for as far as recording, we'll do IWM. That was our last request that we had in the chat. So this is another example, people, of price meeting an objective here. Weekly lowest body, something we targeted. We said we're going to use this SIBI to take us to the weekly lowest body. Look at the delivery. Use that. Came down. That's the whole week right there. Beautiful. Cool. Objective met. What happens after price meets an objective? That's something to always look out for. Met an objective. And then we didn't accelerate past it, did we? Did we, did we blow past that thing? Nah. That's telling us something. All right, so boom, I feel let me go to the monthly and make sure you could always watch in a in a really aggressive move. Red candles hold as support in aggressive bullish moves. So this monthly red candle here may be holding as a level of support for a move higher on IWM. So IWM could just be using this to go higher right now. Um, when you look at the weekly, I already explained, you know, lowest body touch, we popping out. That's something like bullish to me. And here on a daily, the daily charts is the ones that's like, uh, I want to get a little more confirmation, but much like SPX, I actually don't want to see price trade back to here. I don't want to see price trade back to here before running over these highs. 
<clears throat> and if it does, it gotta hold it. If it does come back here first, they gotta hold it. If we close under this VI, I kinda expect price to make a move lower on IWM. But um, ultimately, need more confirmation on everything. Don't get overly eager. Um, on the four, yeah, that actually coincides with what I would wanna say on the four, because even on the four hour, I want price to use the upper half of this four hour busy to take us higher. I don't even want it coming back down in here in the first place. So everything I said, and it's what I mean by I start from the top down and then I use the lower time frames to 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 build the overall story. And they 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 work beautifully together. Like it's never like it, it's not really like, oh, the monthly is telling me something super bullish, and then I just can't figure out how to support that with lower time frames. Like, nah, it don't really it usually works cohesively. So yeah, and, and you're welcome, JT. You're very welcome. So yeah, that, that's the watches. I uh, once again I'm, I'm sorry for a little bit of a lower energy today everybody i was on the road and stuff but if you're watching this on youtube definitely subscribe to the channel we do this every single week and if you're enjoying the free community where you could be in this zoom asking questions and making requests and everything like that definitely join the free community link that's in the description right now so that's all she wrote